cutting edge of how the private sector uh, manages to promote SMEs in what is probably traditionally regarded as government territory. So we look forward to hearing all about that. I'll also be taking a lot of notes on that one, Sandra. Okay, so let's get started. Um, Peter Kaguta is going to be our first speaker. Um, we understand the, the world economic scenario has changed quite dramatically in the last two years. And one area we're looking at is regional integration and how can we make it a reality? How can we get neighboring countries to work together to have the economies of scale and scope so that they can get all those rebates in the chain which make many businesses profitable? Uh, Peter is a Kenyan. He was appointed the first Director General of the East African Community in December 2004, I think it was. He joined the, the community as a macroeconomist in 1996. In the past four years, Peter has overseen the setting up of trade and customs directorates to guide the establishment of the EAC Customs Union. So as Director General, he's worked closely with both the private sector and governments in building public-private partnerships for the successful implementation of this union. And before this, he worked for 15 years as a government economist. So as I said earlier, we've got some gurus on the stage here today. So my pipe opening question, uh, Peter, is at what stage is regional integration at in the EAC in terms of trade and investment policies? And where is it in relation to the goals that you set up in this regard? Peter, over to you. You want to use a microphone? Did you want to sit somewhere? Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'll try to answer the question, two questions. Let me start uh, by expressing my appreciation to ITC for inviting me to, uh, to speak in this uh, very distinguished uh, forum. The East African community is relatively a very young organization. It was established in 1986. And uh, as uh, Mr. Stewart has mentioned, the Customs Union came into being from 2005, from 1st of January 2005. And it was in, implemented in a progressive manner, five years transition period. So we got a full fledged Customs Union from 1st of uh, January this year. But uh, from uh, 1st of January, 1st of July, which is uh, just two months back, the East African community moved to a uh, common market, which is going to be progressively implemented uh, in a period of uh, five years. So by 2015, we'll have a full integrated uh, common market. And of course, uh, the intention is to progress to a uh, monetary union thereafter, and uh, finally to a political federation. But uh, for this presentation, I'll concentrate in the customs union uh, where uh, I was hired uh, to do the job. Uh, under the customs union, we have managed in a period of five years to eliminate internal tariffs. So goods that originate from any member of the South African community uh, goes into the other one, the other's market duty free. And this, as I mentioned, was progressively done in a span of five years. We also have a common external tariff, which has three birds, 0, 10, and 25 percent. The highest tariff in East African community is 25 percent. But we have a sensitive list of goods, which attracts uh, additional protection, but uh, these are only 59 tariff lines. And there is a criteria on how those goods, which are regarded as sensitive, are selected. We also have uh, common instruments for the management of trade between East African uh, community countries and other non-members. And uh, this includes a common customs law, which was enacted by, we have a regional parliament, East African Legislative Assembly, which enacted this uh, common uh, law. And uh, under the common law, we have uh, common valuation systems. So if you are exporting to East Africa, uh, regardless of where your goods land, you'll face a common uh, valuation system. We also have common uh, exemption regimes 
and uh, uh, we also have differentiating functions between the customs authorities in the partner state of the partner states and uh, the central authority where I work for. Let me say what are the results of uh, implementing the customs union. One, we have managed to simplify the trade regime. Previously, before the customs union, some partner states used to have like three, I mean six, even more than uh, uh, at least more than five tariff bands, but we have managed to simplify these to three, and these are applicable, uniformly applicable across the partner states, across the whole region. Two, we have managed to, uh, to put in place a very trans transparent trade regime because you only face the specified tariffs, 0, 10, and 25, and the law uh, outraws outros any other charges of equivalent effect to the tariffs which are specified in our tariff books. So by so doing, we have managed to simplify the trade, I mean, to make the trade regime very transparent. And of course, by having three tariff bands, reducing them from what I've said, five or six tariff bands previously, we have managed to put a business-friendly uh, trade regime in the East African community. Of course, out of this, we have managed to, have, to see the intra-regional trade increase within the span of uh, four years, five years, uh, to increase by over 40 percent. Of course, this is uh, uh, the best of it is that this is in a win-win situation. There is no country which has experienced decline in exports. All of countries have uh, experienced increase in exports to other partner states. There were some fears before that uh, there may be some partners who may, be, who may dominate trade, but uh, fortunately, it's a win-win situation. However, uh, this increase, although it looks commendable, over 40 percent, is still low because when you look at uh, the volume of trade, the interregional trade is only 13 percent. We would wish to see it go up above that, and uh, particularly with a view to reducing the importance of uh, customs uh, duties within the ESC region. Of course, public revenues, contrary to earlier fears, they have increased across the board, across our partner states. And of course, because after reducing the internal tariff uh, or eliminating internal tariffs, uh, goods are cheaper, but uh, you know, the same goods, of course, attract indirect taxes, consumer taxes, but this has contributed to increased revenues. Uh, ESC region, of course, I've uh, mentioned, has become more attractive in terms of uh, being a destination for trade and the investment. And uh, most importantly, the partner states have now adopted the policy of negotiating as a block when negotiating with other countries which are non-members of the South African community. And uh, currently, we are negotiating an economic partnership agreement with the European Union. We have signed a trade and investment framework agreement with the U.S., and of course, uh, uh, we have initiated uh, negotiations with the SADC and COMESA for uh, an FTA, a free trade area, which will encompass the three uh, organizations. But of course, it's not all rosy. There are still challenges that uh, have, we have encountered. One is uh, elimination of non-tariff barriers. Of what I mentioned, that we have eliminated tariff barriers. Uh, tariffs are no longer a problem, but uh, non-tariff barriers are still continue to be a problem. Of course, uh, there is low levels of awareness on the regional integration uh, process itself in terms of what is being implemented, in terms of the opportunities the regional integration uh, process is availing, and in terms of the benefits that could accrue from these uh, opportunities which are unfolding under the regional integration process. Uh, another challenge is challenge of uh, sovereignty issues, where, whereby I would like to say this is changing mindsets. You find this is the greatest challenge uh, and, uh, which is encountered uh, under the regional integration process. This means changing mindsets from national orientation to embracing regional orientation. This is a little bit slow. And uh, I would say most of these problems, most of these challenges that we encounter really emanate from this slow change in orientation from national to regional orientation. 